Hi Tiger fans and welcome to the second edition of the Bingle Recruitment Zone panel show. I'm joined once again by Richmond General Manager of Football, Dan Richardson. And Dan, it's been a pretty quiet period for the Tigers over the last couple of weeks in trade period. I wouldn't say quiet, we've been working hard, but uh, sometimes quite in trade week... Quite in the media week, spectrum, not quite for you. Yeah, sometimes in trade week, uh, I guess you don't get the results that you, you work hard to achieve. And um, yeah, I guess the, the Jack Trengrove situation is a, is a good example of that, yeah. Talk us through that, to how it happened, I mean, how the deal came to happen first, and then obviously the, um, the medical which he failed, which was probably a good thing in the long run, but we wish him all the best. Yeah, oh, look, um, Blair had had some discussions with Melbourne over the course of the year about Jack's situation and, um, and we had a call from Melbourne sort of you know, midway through the trade period about, uh, about Jack and followed those discussions through. Um, as any club does, you, you've got to do your, your due diligence from a medical perspective and um, unfortunately for us, um, but probably more unfortunately for Jack, um, it, it became apparent from that that... Um, that he was still going to have some ongoing problems with his foot. Um, as has been reported, I, I don't think it's uh, you know, as, as major as perhaps what has been reported. I, I'm sure he's a good chance of overcoming that. He's a great, he's a great person and um, great character. I'm sure he'll work hard and get through it. But just from a, a point of view of a club looking to give up a first round draft pick for a player and bring a player to your club um, from another club, the, the risk was just a bit too high for us to take, to be honest. But obviously your protocol is working well because the medical department were able to pick up um, the crack in his foot which allowed you to then go back to Melbourne and, and Jack and say well you know this deal might go ahead now so um, I mean the, the medical staff are, are doing their job perfectly. Yeah, oh yeah great credit should go to our doc who was very thorough um, and, and our recruiting team Blair and our recruiting team just to you know think through those things um, you know really thoroughly and, and the doc particularly and people involved there just, uh, yeah, have, uh, I guess have, have done a good job for us on the one hand and perhaps, um, you know, discovered something that I guess Jack would have perhaps found out ultimately but, um, but brought that to a head, yeah. And talk us through how the Jason Winderlich deal ended up or the, or the non-deal. Yeah, look, Jason and his management approached us sort of, you know, before the trade period started. Um, as has happened in, in this situation, um, once that sort of gained momentum, and Essendon became aware of that. Obviously, they uh, they had discussions with with uh, with Jason, who was obviously their player, and and uh, and obviously he made a decision that he he would either you know retire or prefer to stay with with Essendon rather than continue his career at another club. And we respect that. That's that's fair enough. Um, yeah, you know, I'm all for players um, if possible, and it's changing a little bit in the current environment. But all for players being one club one club players, and and that's what he decided he wanted to do. The deadline is 2 p.m. tomorrow. Um, there's obviously a little bit of activity going on at the moment, but will Richmond be active in the next 24 hours? Oh, Blair's still working hard. The recruiting team is certainly still working hard. But yeah, given, I guess, given the timing now and uh, not a lot, not a long uh, time to go, it, it's probably unlikely, um, which is fine. I mean, um, whilst we certainly, uh, yeah, it would have been great for us to uh, bring in Jack, who sort of fitted our strategy of bringing in. A midfielder and increasing our depth there, um, but still retaining our draft picks would have been a great strategy for us. But um, yeah, given that's fallen over, we're happy, as we've said all along, to re retain our draft picks and uh, invest heavily in this year's draft. Not only have you retained your draft picks, but you've retained pretty much everybody on your list as well. A couple of retirements, obviously, but it's a good sign for a footy club that nobody's wanted to leave the football club. Yeah, that's uh, that's pleasing because there's obviously. Uh, yeah, a few clubs having you know, having those uh, those issues with players. So, yeah, touch wood. Um, all our players uh, seem to be happy and seem to be want to want to be here and 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 want to be hopefully part of the success that we're building towards. So, uh, so that's great. That's a great sign of of confidence in in what we're doing as a club. And some re-signings in Bachelor D, Elton, and also McDonough for the future. Four young players who uh, great to see their names in ink. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think uh, Batch. Uh, he he'll be uh, he was offered a two-year contract, and I think his form in the in the latter half of the year was uh, reflective of and, and well deserved from that from that end. Um, look, the other guys, you know, still generally young. Matty D's had some injury troubles, played some games this year. Um, but we still got a great deal of confidence that he can you know, continue to develop. Uh, Matty McDonough goes into his third year and showed some positive signs during the course of the year. Uh, probably playing more as a, played some time across half-back, but playing more as a forward in the latter part and, 
and uh, and did really well. So uh, look, all all those guys, including Matty Thomas and Ricky Pettard, will be going around for us another year and certainly give us that. You know, that uh, we'll both played a lot of AFL footy this year, and we would expect you know the same from them next year. Trade period finishes at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Then all lives become on the national draft uh, in November. Pick 12. You obviously try to move pick 12 on. You've still got it. Anything could happen in the next 24 hours, but going into the draft, if you do have pick 12, is it the best player available at pick 12, or do you go for a specific need, like a, an inside midfielder or, or a tall back? What do you look for? Yeah, it's a good question. Look, at, I think in your first pick, it's probably more the best player available. Um, I think that would be normally the case with first round picks, but um, at that pick, we, we see most of the players that we're, we've got our eye on are, are being midfield types. Um, so, yeah, on that basis, it'll hopefully satisfy that need as well. But, um, yeah, we're excited about that pick, um, even though, we, yeah, we certainly did consider trading it and, and moving back out the draft um, for the, uh, for the Trengove deal. We're certainly excited about the, the type of player that not only we'll be able to get at pick 12, but in the latter picks as well. And just before we move on, um, is the trade period too long? I mean, it's 10 days at the moment. It does seem to go for an awful long time. And your opinion on, I guess, um, the, the free agency compensation at the moment? I think, it, oh, look, it was shortened from last year to this year. I think 10 days has probably felt about right. Yeah, I don't think we'd want it to go any longer, but you are still got to give enough time. You know, when you're talking about things like medicals, as an example, that can take three or four days yep. to, to sort of see through thoroughly, then you, you probably don't want to be rushing that too much. So 10 days uh, you know, over the course of, of a couple of weekends is not a bad time. And is there any truth to the rumour that Matthew Richardson's put his hand up to maybe go in the national draft because he feels like you do lack a big key forward? I think Richo, from the way I saw him running, uh, walking around here with the, I think he hurt his knee a bit and had a scope during the year. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think he'd be any use to us these days as, as much as we love him. He had a business card made up with 800 goals on it and he actually introduces himself now as the 800 goal legend and the most goals ever at the MCG. But thanks for watching. Thanks, Dan Richardson. And make sure you visit the Bingo Recruitment Zone on richmondfc.com.au for all the latest news on the rest of the trade period and the lead up to the national draft in November. See you next time.